Mr. Predicto, should I try to embroider? There we go. <laughs> Mr. Predicto, should we try embroidery? Listen, but it might be the right time for you. If you're interested in getting into machine embroidery, these are the basics of what you'll need to know. When we started investigating machine embroidery, we were surprised to find it's difficult to break into this craft genre. Sure, there's a lot of information online, but it's all over the place, really. So we're going to try to share all we've learned in this short time with you in this introductory video. And before we began our embroidery journey, we spoke with a few people at a local craft store before we purchased our first machine. And honestly, one woman I remember I in remember particular her. was kind of snobby. She and others were quick to tell us that we were wasting our times unless we spent $5,000 on some fancy dancy machine with something that looked like an iPad on the side, plus $2,500 for classes plus another $250 a year for a maintenance contract? I don't know about you, but I don't think it was smart to spend $8,000 on a hobby that I might not even like. We didn't know if we were even gonna pursue it. That's and right. she's like, there's no other way to do this. Mm -hmm. And one of our local sewing machine dealers was even worse. They began talking about financing, even before they, it's a true story, before they showed us a single machine. So we came up with a name for some of these people. I call them embroidery snobs. <laughs> So we decided to do what everyone else does, go to Amazon, read the reviews, and take a chance. We ended up buying a Brother PE800 embroidery machine for about $800, and guess what? It worked perfectly straight out of the box. Our embroidery venture began at that point. Today, things are even better. We've been testing Brother's $499 Skitch embroidery machine, this one right here, and it's a perfect entry-level machine. We'll snitch on Skitch later in this video, or check out our full review somewhere up here. Regardless of what those experienced embroidery snobs might tell you if you're asking questions, even they had to begin somewhere. So let's be completely honest. We're really not that far away from being total beginners ourselves. But check out the amazing things we've already embroidered. Not too bad, right? If you're looking to learn machine embroidery basics, Let's dive into this beautiful, fun, and potentially profitable crafting experience. So what is embroidery? Embroidery is really the art of decorating a fabric surface, making stitches in a pattern with the help of needle and thread. Some people describe it like painting, but using a needle as your brush and thread for the paint. Embroidery can add beauty to a garment. I mean, think bath towels with your monogram or your name on them or some in inspirational saying or pillows, curtains, tablecloths, even pop-ups, sheepskin car seat covers. Remember those? I do. <laughs> Lots of people use heat transfer vinyl to decorate shirts, hoodies, coats, pillows, bags, and other garments. But embroidery looks a little more colorful, dimensional, and classy. Think doctor's coats, hotel uniforms, polo shirts with company names. Mm -hmm. Embroidery looks and feels better than vinyl and it lasts longer than HTV too. It's safe to say with an already large market base that's continuing to grow, this is one craft business in which artists can potentially make a lot of money if business is on your agenda. An embroidery business doesn't really require a lot of upfront cash to get started regardless of what the snobs tell you. Some machines are as cheap as $500. That's right. Hand embroidery typically uses thicker threads, which helps designs blossom beautifully. With machine embroidery, the thread is quite fine and the design is tightly woven. You can still blossom designs, but it takes a little more thread. Hand embroidery is a lot of fun, and you should definitely give it a try. It can be extremely cathartic to jab at fabric with a needle a few thousand times, but it's very detailed and meticulous. When every single thread is stitched by hand, it becomes very time-consuming work. Machines have evolved into automating this stitching process. 
The main difference between hand and machine embroidery really is the stitching process. Hand embroidery allows for a variety of stitches and you can use different threads and different fabrics right. where every work is really unique. But machine embroidery tends to be more uniform and every piece is going to be identical. That's right. So think you're going to use machines for scale and mass production like in a factory. That's right. And size does matter, regardless of what Felicia says. <laughs> Most embroidery machines have a maximum size they can embroider. For embroidered hats or shirts, you probably won't ever go bigger than a three to four inch square. Most embroidery machines can handle these sizes easily. For larger projects like pillows or quilts or the back of jackets, you might want something even bigger. Yes. These sizes are indicated using something called a hoop where the fabric you're going to embroider is loaded into the machine. It's best to use, well, they say the smallest hoop available for the design. The fabric will be held tighter in a smaller hoop. Now, there may be reasons why you would opt to use a larger than necessary hoop for a design, but that's really beyond the scope of this beginner tutorial. That's right. It's important to understand the limitations of machine embroidery. Smaller letters or artistic details may be difficult to stitch effectively with some machines. Embroidering thicker fabrics like denim or canvas may result in broken needles, broken thread, and broken dreams. Mm -hmm. And although you can embroider baseball caps with a beginner embroidery machine and make hats like this, it's extremely difficult and it probably won't come out with that professional look if that's what you're looking for. Keep your expectations reasonable. You can always trade up your machine later if you find embroidery is your jam. We're thinking about our embroidery are being our jam. It. In this video, we'll discuss single thread embroidery machines. That means there's only one needle that embroiders one color at a time, which requires you to stop and thread each color individually when the machine tells you to when it's ready. Now, there are multi-threaded machines used by professionals that are much more complex and expensive, but you probably don't need those starting out. With the right tools and a bit of practice, you can add personalized designs to clothing, accessories, home decor, and more. So let's talk about the essential supplies you're going to need for machine embroidery. To begin your machine embroidery adventure, you're going to need a few things. A decent quality embroidery machine designed for embroidery tasks. You can't embroider with a plain old sewing machine, and you can't sew with some embroidery machines. But some do both. We'll recommend a few affordable embroidery machines, perfect for beginners, including the two we use ourselves, later in this video to help you get started. Embroidery hoops hold the fabric in place while the machine stitches. The maximum hoop size depends on the machine you have. Mm -hmm. Most machines come with at least one hoop. Stabilizers are backings that support the fabric during the embroidery process. There are various types of stabilizers and something else called interface. We'll talk more about that in a little bit. Embroidery threads are specifically made for machine embroidery. They come in various types and colors, including sparkly and metallic. Ooh. <laughs> designs. You have the option to digitize your own designs or convert existing ones, such as logos or drawings, using embroidery apps or software. Alternatively, you can utilize pre-made designs that are already ready to be loaded into your machine. So let's move on to setting up your machine. First thing, obviously, you'll need to familiarize yourself with your machine. You'll need to learn how to thread it how to change needles and attach the hoop. We have videos that show you how to do that with our machines on our YouTube channel. You'll also need to know how to load designs either via Wi-Fi or Bluetooth or USB, depending on your machine. Or you can select them directly on your machine if your machine has built-in designs, like our brother SE2000, That's which right. is some of million designs on that thing. I love thing. that machine. Let's talk about choosing and preparing your design. Select a simple design for your first project. You will need designs that have been specifically created for your machine embroidery, known as digitized designs. These files have information embedded in them regarding the order of stitching, how many stitches per inch, when the machine should pause to change the thread colors, and so much more information. You can download these from various websites. Some are free and some are paid. Usually, digitized designs are affordable, ranging from free to as high as $50, depending on the size and complexity. Many machines include a library of pre-digitized designs for your use and sometimes even commercial use as well. And some even have an app you can use to make or customize your own designs. You can even convert your own drawings or logos to an embroidery design using a digitization service. 
For under 20 bucks, ZDigitizing.com will professionally digitize just about any design. We've used them many times now. That's right. Z Digitizing actually digitized the design on this hoodie from a JPEG image, and they made it better out of this magic. Once you've selected your design, transfer it to your machine following the manufacturer's instructions. Embroidery placement on shirts can vary depending on the design, the size, the placement, and personal preference. However, there is a general guide for common placements. The left chest is the most common placement for embroidered designs on shirts. Smaller designs in this era will look much better. For larger designs or logos, you might consider placing the embroidery design in the center of the chest or on the back of the shirt, centered between the shoulders. Remember to consider the size of the design in relation to the area of placement and whether it's a, a man's shirt, a woman's shirt, or a child's shirt, because right. there's a lot more real estate on men's shirts than there's on a child's shirt. You don't want your design to be too overbearing like this cruise review shirt. It's like a billboard. <laughs> this is one of our first embroidered shirts. It had a logo that was a little too big and it looks kind of obnoxious, you have to admit. I would never wear this. <laughs> embroidered shirts and jackets should be subtle and aesthetically pleasing, like this Nike shirt. You see how small this is? And I have ATT and Adidas examples I can show you as well. What's there to know about choosing thread? Did you know most embroidery thread is polyester? Polyester is a popular sewing and embroidery thread because it's strong, affordable, and available in a zillion colors. It's not a great idea to use polyester to embroider on anything that will be subjected to extreme heat like pot holders because the thread can shrink or even melt. <laughs> Cotton thread is a great alternative for hot stuff and a good choice for machine embroidery. There's also rayon thread, but I don't know a whole lot about that yet. Like with sewing machines, embroidery machines use something called bobbin thread. Bobbin thread is wound on a smaller spool and stored in this sneaky compartment typically located under the needle. Bobbin thread is used to create stitches on the underside of fabric to help create a strong stitch that holds the fabric together. Bobbin thread is often different from top threads in terms of color, thickness, and fiber. Bobbin thread is typically black or white, right? But it can also match your embroidery thread color or be whatever color you want it to be. That's right. Some people will ma match it to yeah. the color they're using for their design. What's there to know about hooping the fabric? Proper hooping ensures a smooth embroidery process. Hooping is where you'll use your embroidery hoop to isolate the area on the fabric where you will have your machine sew embroidered patterns. Think of hooping like making a sandwich and then flattening it very tightly like the top of a a musical drum. The hoop comes in two pieces, an inner and an outer hoop. Some are pinned together, sometimes with clips, and some are adjustable with a tightening screw assembly. And our favorite hoops are magnetic hoops. They do all the same things. When creating that hoop sandwich, you'll usually place something called stabilizer down onto the outer hoop first. An embroidery stabilizer is a material that supports the fabric and thread being embroidered. It's a temporary part of a project that's hooped along with the fabric or garment. Stabilizers are also known as backing. Depending on what you're embroidering with your machine, you may need a certain type of stabilizer or interface. Now, don't get hung up on this crazy terminology now. We'll talk more about this in a while. That's right, that's right. You'll have to play with that a little bit yeah. to get what you like. You'll then place the material you plan to embroider directly over the stabilizer. In most cases, that's it. Slide the inner hoop over the stabilizer and fabric and secure it as tightly as possible. You'll want this sandwich to be tight as possible for the best possible results. Ensuring the fabric is super taut with zero wrinkles. Pro tip, when embroidering cotton shirts or other garment blends susceptible to shrinking, it's probably a good idea to wash and pre-shrink them before embroidering them. The shrinkage might cause your embroidered design to wrinkle or pucker since the thread may not shrink along with the material your garment is made of. That's right. And we've done that actually. Mm -hmm. Actually, it's a good idea to use Taylor's chalk or a washable fabric marker to mark the placement before hooping to ensure it's exactly where you want it to be. That's right. Let's move on to stabilizer. Stabilizer makes finished embroidery look better because the stitches are flatter, crisp, and stable. Stabilizer also helps garments hold it better through wash. Where it gets a little complicated 
is there are actually different types of stabilizers, including tear away, cut away, and wash away. And you have to know when to use each of these. For pillows or towels, a tear away stabilizer underneath and wash away on top usually works great. It's layered and hooped along with the fabric or garment to be sewn before you embroider it. We'll talk more about that later and probably in a separate video. Yeah, I agree. There is also something called interface that my mom recently reminded me of. It's mainly used for sewing, but it can also be used for embroidered garments that you're going to wear. Resembling a thin fabric, interface usually becomes a permanent addition to apparel project. It adds body and stiffness, providing reinforcement so the embroidered design it won't wave or curve over time, like Fresh's Virgin Cruise shirt. Mm, yeah, that one didn't look good after a while. No. You see what's going on here. And this it's is a professional kinda, one we purchased. Yeah, it's kind of nasty. When deciding between interfacing and stabilizer, consider this. Stabilizers are commonly used for tote bags, pillows, towels, and crafts. The stabilizer is meant to be removed after stitching. Interfacing is often used to provide more body in apparel projects for things that you wear. Both interfacing and stabilizer are available as sew-in or adhesive options. That's right. Personally, I found that using interface when embroidering a t-shirt improves my finished product tremendously. You can substitute stabilizer combinations for interface, like two sheets of tearaway stabilizer or tearaway with poly no-show mesh stabilizer. And Adding wash away on top of the fabric really helps tremendously, especially with towels. I know it all sounds like gibberish right now, and we'll do a video that explains all these stabilizers in the future. Thank you. Right? It's a lot. <laughs> right it's a lot. All right, let's talk about threading your embroidery machine. Before you can sew, you have to load a bobbin with thread, as we said before, drop it into its compartment and pull it through its threading mechanism. Don't worry, that's the easy part. Then you have to follow your machine's diagram to thread the needle. Our brother and embroidery machines are awesome because they're labeled with numbers to follow. Super easy. It makes threading the machines a breeze. And when we reach the final step, there's an automatic needle threader that automatically threads the needle. I mean, it just pops it right through there. You don't have to search for the little hole. And it's an incredible concept. My favorite part. Yeah, the brothers, all, even the $500 brother yeah. does. Yeah. Now, we're just about ready to send our design to the embroidery machine. But safety first. Always follow safety guidelines when operating your machine. Keep your fingers away from the moving needle and turn off the machine when making adjustments. It's going to hurt if you get your finger under yeah, there. Don't play. No, don't. So let's talk about the embroidery process itself. Once your fabric is hooped and the design is loaded, position and attach the hoop in your machine. Then press the start button on your machine. It's always a good idea to begin with a test run on a similar piece of fabric to ensure the design comes out as you expect, and then proceed with the embroidering on your actual project. Thread tension is the amount of resistance on the thread as it goes through the embroidery machine. Adjusting the tension is an art in itself I've found. Too tight and you'll break your thread. Too loose and your embroidered design just won't look right. With the correct tension, only the upper thread should be visible on the top side of the fabric and the bottom thread should only be visible on the underside of your embroidered fabric. Now finishing touches. After the machine completes the embroidery, carefully remove the hoop and trim any excess stabilizer. As you gain experience, you'll learn to troubleshoot common issues like thread breaks or misaligned stitches. Online tutorials, community forums, and classes can be invaluable resources as you develop your skills. Now, once you're comfortable with the basics, you can explore different types of stitches, threads, and stabilizers. Go crazy. Experiment with various fabrics and layering techniques to create depth and texture in your designs. That's right. where it gets really right. exciting. I saw some really interesting things lately. Machine embroidery opens a world of creative possibilities. With patience and a little practice, you too, like us, will soon be creating beautiful embroidered items that are truly unique. Right. Remember once every expert and snob was once a beginner. <laughs> so start stitching and enjoy the process. That's right. Let's talk about choosing your first embroidery machine. Important to note is do you want to embroider your little heart out or do you want to sew and embroider? Some machines can do one or the other and some are capable of doing both. We started out with the PE800 embroidery only machine and then graduated to the 
SE2000. And then we got the stitch to check it out. So meet the brother SE2000, your new best buddy in crafting. It's a nifty sewing and embroidery machine that does both and it's chock full of goodies. Right out of the box, you've got 190 snazzy designs, 13 fonts for creative monogramming, and a whopping 241 sewing stitches. It's ridiculous. I don't even know what these are for. Do you want more? Dive into the Art Spira app for a treasure trove of both free and premium designs that pair up with this gem. Got a creative itch? Just plug in a USB with your original designs and voila, your fabric's got a personal touch. And the control panel? It's a slick 3.7 inch LCD screen where you can tinker with designs, get savvy with tutorials, and run the show without any other gadget. But wait, there's more. <laughs> Say goodbye to needle threading headaches with the automatic threader that we've talked about the Brother right. Machines having. Right. Got grand ideas? The spacious 5x7 hoops got you covered for all that fancy lettering and big bold designs. And don't worry about bobbins going rogue. This machine's got them on lockdown. Oh, and those eight sewing feet that come with this machine? <laughs> they're like the Swiss Army knife for your stitching escapades. All this for around 1600 bucks. The Brother SE2000 is practically a steal, and it's the MVP of sewing and embroidery machines at this price. Now, we have the Brother Skitch PP1, the little sister, I guess. You could say that, I suppose. If you're just dipping your toes into the world of embroidery and you don't need to sew, the Brother Stitch PP1 might just be the companion you need. It's a machine that's been stirring up quite the conversation among crafters and embroidery snobs, and we bought one just to find out why. The Skitch PP1 is a single needle embroidery only machine. As you can see, it's got a sleek modern look. No screen on this machine, as it's powered entirely by the Artspira app that will only work with iOS and Android devices and not computers. Think iPads, iPhones, Android phones. Right. It comes with a 4x4 four four magnetic hoop, which really simplifies the hooping process tremendously. And it's the largest size that this sketch will work with. There is a 3x3 three three magnetic hoop you can purchase separately and is great for I'm doing smaller projects. I don't think I'll ever go back to a non-magnetic hoop. It's nice, ever. isn't it? Skitch was designed to be user-friendly with a compact size that won't hog all your workspace. The built-in designs are adorable, featuring everything from floral patterns to butterflies to sunshine and rainbows. That said, it's not all sunshine and rainbows. The free version of the Artspira app is super helpful, featuring step-by-step -step videos that guide you through the entire embroidery process. Brother could be a little more generous with the app especially when it comes to uploading your own designs without reaching for your wallet. There are some pesky limitations, especially when uploading your own digitized designs, but it does work pretty well. Paying $12.99 a month for the pro version pretty much opens up unlimited usage, a lot more designs, uh, design storage, and even image digitization. That's right. A hard right. time with that word. That's yeah. right. The Brother Skitch PV1 is super new, and some users have reported alignment and threading quirks. We're happy to report ours has been perfect. We found the Skitch PV1 super easy to use, and it's definitely a hit for those looking to add a personal touch to their project without too much fuss. The price point is also very attractive, making it a solid choice for beginners who aren't ready to invest in a higher-end model just yet. Some other great beginner machines others have mentioned include the following. The Brother SE700. You know somebody my, has my one of these. My daughter has that's that one, right. yes. So if you're on the hunt for a twofer that does mm -hmm. sewing and embroidery, that's both wallet friendly and chock full of features, you've got to check out the Brother SE700. For just under 500 bucks, it's practically a steal as well. I agree. And she's loving hers. Yeah. This little powerhouse comes ready to roll with 135 built-in designs, 10 built-in embroidery fonts for all your lettering fun, and 103 stitches to play with, all easily managed on a handy 3.2 inch LCD screen. Plus, you can jazz up things with your own designs through the USB port. The 4x4 embroidery space is just the right size for a whole bunch of projects, so go ahead and spruce, the, spruce up those towels, those shirts, who knows, anything.
Yeah, it's about the same price as the Brother it Skitch. Is. It so is. if you want sewing, that's probably a good that's option. That's right. Like with the Skitch PP1, the Artspira app connects to the SE700 as well and opens up a world of designs and fonts in its free and paid versions. The SE700 comes with seven sewing feet that switch out in the snap, covering everything from zigzagging to buttonholing. There's a generous amount of space for those bigger endeavors. And the automatic threader? Well, it's tough to find another machine that gives you this much bang for your buck and an automatic threader. I don't think I'll ever own a machine that doesn't have one now yeah, that I've had these. It's amazing. It is. Welcome to the fabulous world of embroidery. Let us know what machine you're using and any tips or tricks new users should know about. That's right.